Hi, uh, welcome to this uh, short introduction to um, my SCP uh, solo rules, solo, contain and protect. So uh, what you get this time is, um, it's 28 pages including the, the front cover, so um, probably about 25 pages of actual content. And uh, you get the usual preamble, introducing you to solo play. This book is really intended for people that have limited experience of um, solo playing. Um, maybe have only uh, either never solo played or have just used something like Mythic. Um, so you get a, a basic introduction, um, talking about what an emulator is and the rules of improvising and how sometimes we tweak the rules of games to make it more playable for a single character or a very small group of characters. Um, and then I talk a little bit about uh, missions and how um, one of the constant battles in solo is how to create adventures where you don't know what the ending is um, and then i launch into a kind of um improvisation uh, advice and this is all tightly focused on um solo play and the start of my um, adventure i was working through um a kind of mass extinction event in um uh, kansas so uh this can be um, some of the uh, language comes directly from improvisation, improvisational theatre, but you can use these improv ideas in any solo game. Um, and they uh, taking the offer, grab the eye. Grabbing the eye is about creating a kind of a centerpiece. Um, think visualizing a centerpiece uh, action or event at the heart of your um, of each scene. Um, you know, just to you know, once you've got that then you can hang other things off it um we're then talking about three things um which is a, a fast way of creating npcs and locations and um minor details but if you want to play a kind of forensic um sort of crime scene investigates type game three things is really good for uh, drilling down into many details or for fine details then there's fortunately unfortunately um which now you can often use and button because so if you've got a, a yes no question yes and kind of amplifies it no and amplifies it in the negative yes but kind of tones it down kind of um you know, if you've still stolen a car and you want to know whether it's got uh, fuel in it um, whether it works it's kind of yes but the tank's nearly empty so it's kind of yes you've got fuel yes you can get away but it creates this next complication so you then have to fuel up um that sort of thing and that because um should you be used to you know, reintroduce existing ideas so because you did this the next thing then happens so it kind of it pulls um, ideas from your game already into the present scene and kind of creates um, a little bit of continuity there. Fortunately and unfortunately, um, our alternatives to yes and no, often a straight no um, can kind of block a game. You know, if you want to know if there are any exits, if you're kind of running and you just get a no, you kind of go, oh, great, you know, dead end. That's fine. But if you get fortunately or unfortunately they kind of almost beg to expand on the answer so are there any uh, exits unfortunately and then you know maybe it was a fire exit but it's been blocked um or um unfortunately the you know it's a, there's a door but it's heavily locked it, it, it kind of it, it 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 begs an extra detail on it now the emulators are very very simple um now, they're actually based upon a basic skill role and um, in SCP, the, the role playing game, if you roll under half your target number, it's a um, critical failure. If you roll more than double your, um, crit uh, your target number, it's a critical. And so what we're using here is a, a D12 with that, that kind of critical level set at three, your target number at six and your critical at 12. Um, now you will notice that it is biased because um, towards the yes, but that's because critical failures are three times more common than um, critical successes, um, which is a very weird um, you know, feature of the game. Um, the SCP game is unnecessarily complicated in my mind. Um, you know, it could have been 
you know, if, if you just move the skill system to say D100, it, you'd have been dealing with whole numbers. Instead, it, it's um, you know, using these kind of decimal uh, points, um, which I, I can't really see the benefit of, but maybe that's just me. And then you see this fortunately, unfortunately, uh, come back up again um, as an alternative table. So you can kind of drill down to absolute yeses and nos um, with uh, 1D12 or if it's a more narrative flowing situation you can use the um fortunate unfortunately and it's still a one to five six to twelve um you on both ones so they are they're truly interchangeable and uh you can use whichever you want then there are some examples of questions um the is it true question is really really important in scp you may be um going to the the wiki grabbing a um a, an scp uh, and you know, simply by reading it, you kind of you're you're going to have spoilers. But what you can do is, when something you know, an ability it, it supposedly has according to the wiki, when you're confronted with that, you can actually ask, is that true? Is the article true? And if you get a no, um, then obviously the SCP you're dealing with doesn't conform with the um, documented version. Um, so it could be a variation, a sub uh, SCP. Um, so you, you really don't know, um, you know what you're going to encounter until you encounter it um, uh, because you are, are testing the veracity of the, the um, information you've been given. Uh, and then I talk a little bit about scenes and um, how you can introduce kind of plot twists and uh, diversions in there. Again, so the, the whole adventure doesn't just become a, a procession. Um, and you know, so that's it. It, it kind of uses of the um, open question, the, the closed question. The open question, now this actually is a modification from um, the one page solo engine by Carl, Carl Hendricks. And I've replaced um, the uh, the playing cards with uh, D12, and uh, because the Oracle is D12, you're always going to use a, a D12, and you can. Uh, so the the kind of prompt words um, are from the value of the card, and then what was a suit of the card. Um, then becomes the second D12 roll. So you can roll two D12, uh, different colors or different shapes, different sizes, whatever. And you can do it all in one roll. And then there's some little advice about interpreting them. But I also, I noticed that the SCP rule books use um, a variation of the game icons. And um, so uh, I included the, the visual prompts because not everyone likes in trying to interpret words. It's certainly the hardest uh, element of um, you know, solo play. So I introduced solo, uh, so visual prompts and explain how they're used and where you can get them from and um, how to use them. And then there's a mission generator. Now this one, this table is the only element in the entire book that actually comes from the SCP rulebook. And um, all I've done is turned um, you know, three of their bullet, bullet point lists into um, a D4 table or half a d8 table um, and that's the all i've done there um, there's no other um, scp content in here um, so you will you you'd roll d6 to find out what your mission objective is whether it's to secure contain or protect and then a d4 on the right uh, column to um, to narrow that down to the actual um, case and then we're back into um, using the dice and uh, oracles. And I talk about adventure structure, the adventure in three acts and the five room dungeon as alternative structures um, and how they influence um, your kind of oracle roles and things just to help you build a mission because you know, um, SCP isn't really a sandbox game, it's mission driven. So I had to support missions. And then I've, I talk about scenes again in the context of the mission um, structure. Um, and then the cast. Now the cast is all about whether you're playing one character, multiple characters, whole teams, two teams. Um, and um, then dealing with um, 
the kind of mooks, the kind of low level um, stuff, uh, lieutenants, which are kind of um, they're above mooks, they're significant threats, but they're not the actual uh, the SCP, and dealing with the SCP as a, from a solo point of view. And then um, now I always include some kind of um, drama dice mechanic, and um, I've used that. I've used the exploding uh, dice um, idea from uh, SCP and turned that into a drama dice mechanic. Um, they don't explode. Sorry, the, the drama dice in this one take a while, so um, it is something which will more likely to run through your mission rather than in a scene um and then i i tie it all back together um in a final uh, thing about scenes because scenes are so important in a mission-based uh, adventure and that's it that's what you get um that's the whole thing uh, it should help you play scp as a solo game uh, thank you for watching